This video is for Aiken scholars, and it's, it's really your introduction to stoichiometry, which is investigating or making use of the relationships between masses in chemical reactions or balanced chemical equations. And um, what I want to show you right now at the start of the video is the mole map, and there's a copy of this in your OneNote class notebooks. And for now, really the ones on here on this mole map that we want to be able to make use of are the grams of A and the molecules of A. The liters of A in solution is related to solution concentrations, which would be a future unit if we're able to make it there, so we're not worried about that right now. Likewise, liters of gas A is going to be something that comes from ideal gas laws. So these are for later in the course. We will not concern ourselves with those right now. So we're just really gonna be looking at the top half of the mole map. And to be able to go from grams of A to moles of A, this mole map is reminding you that you need to make use of the molar mass. And if you're making that conversion, you would have grams of A times one mole of A over whatever the molar mass happens to be in grams of A. And then that would give you the moles. Likewise, if you have molecules or atoms or ions or anything at all, you would have your molecules of A. And remember, you cannot abbreviate molecules as M-O-L-E because that would be mole. You can also not abbreviate molecules as M-O-L because that is also already the abbreviation for mole. So molecules of A times one mole of A and as long as you're talking about small items, small particles, and you're talking about molecules to moles or atoms to moles, this is always going to be Avogadro's number of molecules. And when you solve that, again, you would have moles of A. If you're trying to go in the opposite direction, I'll show that on the right side. If you're trying to go from moles of B, to grams of B, then you would use the molar mass in grams for one mole of B. If you're not trying to do that to B, but you're trying to do it to A, well then it's just the inverse of what we've already done for A. Notice that these two conversion factors are just flipped versions of each other. They're just flipped or inversions. They're not uh, that different. Of course, if A and B are different compounds or different elements, then those molar masses would be different. Likewise, for the molecules, you would have moles of B, which you would multiply by Avogadro's number over one mole of B. And remember, this could be molecules, atoms, ions, anything like that. Now the mole map doesn't make much sense if we don't have reactions to use to actually do the conversions with. In fact, the big thing in the mole map that you should have noticed was that in the middle of the mole map, to go between moles of A and moles of B, we have to use this molar ratio that comes from a balanced chemical equation. And so our starting point for solving any kind of stoichiometry question is to always have a balanced chemical equation. So let's take a look at two reactions. Let's say that we have some ethanol. Ethanol is a common additive into fuels to be able to make those fuels greener, at least in terms of making better use of renewable energy. And let's say we react that with oxygen. That makes this a combustion reaction. So we're always going to form carbon dioxide and water in a combustion reaction. When you look at this reaction and you think about trying to start to balance it, you might say there's two carbons, so I need two CO2s. There are six hydrogens, so I need three waters. At this point, you say I've got four plus three oxygens, which is seven. 
And you might be saying to yourself, well, that's an odd number and I have to double it because I can only have an even number here. But you should notice that there is an odd oxygen here with the ethanol. So if we have seven oxygens over here, we already have one here from the ethanol, so we only need six here, which means our coefficient is three. If we go ahead and balance another reaction for methanol, also undergoing combustion, and then this will allow us to compare these two reactions and the masses involved. We have only one carbon, so we only need one carbon dioxide. We have four hydrogens, so we need two waters. But now notice that we've got two and two, which is four. Now we have an even number of oxygens, but this one extra in the methanol is always gonna make that odd unless we double the methanol. When we double the methanol, we should double all of the other coefficients that we already have. So notice we have two carbons, two carbons. Four times two is eight hydrogens. We now have eight hydrogens. We now also have four and four oxygens, which is eight. We already have two here from the two methanols. So we only need six more coming in from the air, from the gas. So with each of these reactions, let's say that we've got 10 grams of fuel and want to know how much CO2 in grams will each fuel produce. And so we can use our mole map as a guide. So we are going to have either grams of methanol or grams of ethanol. When we have grams of methanol or grams of ethanol, we need to find moles of ethanol or methanol. We then need to use our molar ratio from our balanced chemical equation to convert from our ethanol or methanol into carbon dioxide. And then we need to use the molar mass of carbon dioxide to get grams of carbon dioxide. So in the beginning here, we're definitely gonna to need to know the molar mass of carbon dioxide, of methanol, and of ethanol. And so you could again do your little tables where there's one carbon, two oxygens, 12.01 grams per mole for carbon, 16.00 grams per mole for oxygen, multiply across and add to find our molar mass. I didn't leave a lot of space here because we're not trying to find mass percents, we just want the molar masses. You can also, if you've got the hang of this, you can just kind of jot down notes for yourself, kind of like we did with the electron counts. You don't have to show a whole table here, but you do need to be able to keep this straight in your head when you're adding things up. So methanol then is 32.05 grams per mole. And I might as well do the table for the ethanol. And then we've got all of the molar masses that we need for these compounds. I did catch a little mistake here. 6.06 .06 is what I should have. So this is 46.08 grams per mole. So now let's do methanol first since that's the smaller molecule. So we have 10 grams of methanol. According to the mole map, and you want to get to the point where this is basically a memorized process for you, according to the mole map, we take our grams of A and we need to divide by the molar mass of A. In this case, this is grams of methanol. 
So we need to divide by the 32.05 grams of methanol in one mole of methanol. The next step, we've done this mole to mole conversion before, but we've done it within a compound using the balanced chemical formula. Now what we need to do is use the molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. And what we want to do is we want to place the moles of CO2 over moles of methanol. So from our balanced reaction, we have two moles of CO2 for every two moles of methanol. I would recommend writing those coefficients exactly as you see them in the reaction, and then you can always go back to simplify that to one, if that's what you're choosing to do. The final step would be to multiply. Now that we have moles of carbon dioxide, we would multiply by the molar mass of carbon dioxide to get grams of carbon dioxide. So the final step would be to multiply by 44.01 grams of CO2 for every one mole of CO2. And then you plug that into your calculator. So we have 10 grams of methanol times 44.01 grams of CO2 divided by 32.05 grams of methanol and of course the times one in the middle there. So what we find is that from 10 grams of methanol we can form 13.73 and you could keep going but this is what we would need for significant figures. 13.73 grams of CO2. So that answer is not complete without the, late, the unit and the label there. For the ethanol, we would have the same kind of setup. We would have 10 grams of ethanol where we end up converting to moles of methanol sorry, ethanol, by dividing by the molar mass of the ethanol, which was the 46.08 grams per mole. And then we convert to moles of CO2 from moles of ethanol. And in our balanced reaction, we see that we have two moles of CO2 for every one mole of ethanol. And then finally again, multiply by the molar mass of the carbon dioxide to find our answer. So we still start out with 10, but now it's 10 times two times 44.01 divided by 46.08. And we find that's 19.10 grams of CO2. So there's a couple things going on here and you cannot always eyeball the questions to be able to say for sure. Of course the ethanol has twice as much carbon per molecule as the methanol does. So why don't we form twice as much CO2? Well, the methanol has a smaller or a lighter molar mass where the methanol, the 10 grams of methanol, 10 over 32, we have about a third of a mole here of the methanol. Whereas the 10 over the 46, we have between a fourth and a fifth of a mole of ethanol. And so even though we've got more carbon atoms per molecule in the ethanol than in the methanol, because we don't have as many molecules, we don't actually have twice as much CO2 formed from that reaction. The other issue is that part of the coefficients here came into play, where the two to one compared to two to two, 
the two to two is because there was only one carbon for every molecule of methanol. That's why you only get one CO2 for every molecule of methanol. The two to two was because of having to balance out the oxygen for the rest of the reaction. So this is the general process for going from grams to grams. And you're gonna to wanna to be able to do this basically in your sleep for any kind of chemical reaction. Now, what if I had given you another question here? We could certainly use the mole map and we could certainly use these reactions to find out anything we wanted to. What if I had asked you, with 10 grams of the fuel, how many molecules of oxygen gas were necessary for the reaction? Just because we went from grams of a reactant to grams of a product, doesn't mean we can't go from a reactant to another reactant, or even from a product to another product. The key is the molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So let's say for both of these, that we've got 10 grams of methanol and 10 grams of ethanol. How would you convert those to find how many molecules of oxygen gas were necessary for each of those reactions? And again, go ahead and take a look at the mole map and consider the mole map in your approach. So how many molecules of oxygen gas are needed for each of these 10 grams of fuel? Last chance to pause. And the answer is about three times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen for the methanol and about four times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen for the ethanol. The reason why or how you can estimate these is that, again, we have about a third of a mole of the methanol, so we should have about a third of this many molecules, which would be two times 10 to the 23rd. But that two is then times three halves, so again, we should have close to three. It's a little bit less than three because this was a little bit less than a third. Down here, we've got 10 over 46, which again is, let's say, a, a fourth. A fourth of this would be 1.5. A fifth of this would be 1.2. 1.2 times three gives us 3.6. 1.5 times three gives us 4.5. So we should be somewhere between 3.6 and 4.5 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen. Notice that in this case, again, we've got lot fewer moles of the ethanol, but because the ethanol overall has more atoms in it to react with oxygen, it takes more oxygen in the long run for this reaction. But again, you can't just eyeball the numbers and say, oh, this one's always going to take less oxygen or make less CO2, because sometimes the mass might be different enough where even though it's a smaller molecule, you might make more of that particular product you're trying to find. All of these conversions, being able to go from grams to moles, moles to molecules, moles to grams, all of these are key for being able to look at uh, amounts and chemical reactions. And the next topic is going to deal more with um, using these conversions and some extra practice with these conversions as we look at something called empirical and molecular formulas.